Hey everyone, and welcome back to Nomi Factory, where we continue our mission to get the creative vending upgrade. Last episode, we got our tier 2s and tier 8 micro miners on passive, and we got those wired into their own microverse projectors, along with some of the other missions that we'll need to finish the game. Our assembly lines got some upgrades to decrease crafting times. And we also added some slots for Draconic Evolution Fusion Crafting, which I think we're going to have to make use of today. But yeah, we left off last episode trying to craft the Creative RF Source, our second creative item. And we actually got it crafted here. Although, as you can tell by the time on your screen, that was many, many hours later. So I kicked off some very, very long crafts and took care of some little minor projects I've been meaning to clean up around the base. The first one being the Atomic Reconstructor, so I rebuilt this thing on a new section of our base. I thought up here was a decent enough place for it. And this design actually combines the on-demand setups and the passive setups that we had for the Atomic Reconstructor. This basically just combines it into one, as the only ones we need right now are Inori, Emiratic, and Ristonia. So all three of those things are now being passively created with this new setup over here. The design makes use of an AE subnet, so all of the items are transferred over from our main applied energistic system into a chest, and those are imported via import buses into a formation plane, which drops the items. The atomic reconstructor then zaps them, <laughs> and they're picked up with a ranged collector from actually the additions. And we have some level emitters to control how many are sent into the chest. So yeah, it's a pretty simple design, but I think it works well in this area of the base. By this point, the craft for the source was well underway, and we still had quite a while to wait on that thing. So I decided just to move over the sugarcane farm. I'm actually not sure at this point if we even need this thing, but I don't know, it sits nicely next to our atomic reconstructor. Then I did actually add a few more injectors to our on-demand setups. But yeah, afterwards I moved up the enchanter, which is something we'll need for our third creative item. I think maybe something we can get today. But yeah, we got two of those things surrounded with magical wood, and we got an interface to supply them patterns. There's nothing being passive here, but we may end up switching these over to passive processes, since they are quite slow. I fixed some of the wiring on the microverse projectors, it was quite easy to fix. It's just that, uh, me being me, I forgot to plug things in again, so yeah. <laughs> but yeah, now I decided to finally tackle DML, I've been wanting to clean this thing up ever since I set it up, honestly. But I figured that I would more or less just be rebuilding what's already there. Definitely though, if you guys are playing this pack, leave yourself more space between DML, that was, uh, yeah, that was a mistake. Anyways, I more or less left all the loot fabricators and simulations in place, only I took out all of the drawers and replaced them with the framed versions, and that also allowed us to reorganise things a little bit better. All of the ingot drawers we no longer need there because of the fluid solidifier, so I got those moved over. This is definitely a much cleaner setup under here now, don't you think? Still have to wait on these drawers here emptying. I think we got most of them going into this interface here. Maybe it's actually finished, so yeah, I'll remove all these drawers. In terms of the simulations, it's a much more condensed list of data models. There's really only a couple that we need here in the late game. And the dragon model, the big, one of the biggest bottlenecks, is already in our supercomputer. So I also added more creative tanks onto our AE network and was able to hook up sulfur dioxide, which we can use for sulfur dust. There's no use doing this through DML anymore. So we got, I think this is a ZPM electrolyzer on the job. That's more than enough. I know that we said that aesthetics was going to be a secondary concern. And that's still the case, but I did go around and clean up some of the conduits around the base and put on some facades on the ones that were sticking out. I also did finally take care of the floating assembly line that we had, our original which we still do need set up in the very specific way. This is used for the fusion reactors, which we only need for the creative RF source. It has to be able to handle enough items. I think we also use these for tier nine circuits. But yeah, that was removed from its old place and put next to all of the other assembly lines. And while waiting on the very last crafts, I did go around the base and just clean some of the areas up next to our fluid solidifiers and the machines. I cleaned up some of the old DML drawers and added some ingots that we were missing. And only after all of that, we now have our creative energy source. And this thing, we are going to put right on the input of our draconic reactor ball. I keep calling it a reactor ball, it's not a reactor ball, the energy core. <laughs> Actually, how full is this thing? Yeah, we're back up to thousands of years to fill. That's probably all the fusion craft is still going. Yeah, this is going to go right here. 
And I believe it does input from all faces of the source. So what we can actually do here is put phantom energy faces on all five sides. And I always forget, is it this first? Yeah, there we go. Just shift right click. And what this does is it basically acts as if you're plugging this directly into the energy pylon itself. And now we're at one year to fill. Wow. <laughs> Wow, that is crazy. Now we really have infinite RF. I think we, we're actually going to remove this thing. Or at least the wiring for it. We don't need to have these conduits here. We can probably end up turning off the Nequada reactors. Yeah, that didn't put a dent in this thing. <laughs> nice. All right, so where do we go from here? I think that we should start to look at the next item for creative vending. So we have one of six of the creative RF sources. I didn't realize it was six of these things, but yeah. <laughs> we have our creative tanks. That was the first item that we made. I think maybe next one we want to look at is the creative mill. This is probably the next useful one that we can go for. So once again, let's start to encode recipes here. Yeah, so the creative mill is going to take another four of these ultimate generators. That's that's so many generators. Yeah, let's also encode the creative RF source. This uses a bunch of opinion cores. And I did anticipate some of this, which is why very, very early in the game, you may remember me saying set up red coal. Yeah, this is where it all gets used. So we're at like just over 230k. That's not going to be enough. I think we need like 500k or... Closer to a million, I'm not sure. Let's also encode creative energy cell, the applied energistics energy cell, and the regular energy cell. There's so many energy cells. Look at all these things. Oh, and that's going to be a lot of NBT data. I don't know if this recipe is going to work like this. We'll see, but that's enough to keep us busy for a while. So for the creative mill, we're missing what exactly? Some water mills. That should be easy enough to fix. And everything else we have? I wish. Just some stone burnt lava, lava mills, wind mills, and fire mills. And ender pearls. Wait a second. We should have ender pearls here, shouldn't we? Oh, you know what? I removed one of the connections up to the second part, and I think I didn't replace it. That might have been a critical connection there. I think this line of wire should fix our problem. Okay, I just got done fixing some of the buffers here. Let's see if we can request this creative mill. Wait, not a thousand. <laughs> I think I clicked a thousand there. We can get one. All right. Yeah, you know what? This is actually pretty tame. This really doesn't look too bad a craft. Let's do this. Yeah, there was some weird NBT data issues with these wireless heating coils, but as long as you set the recipe manually, then you should be all right. Hopefully this finishes here. And I think, again, we will need multiple of these. Yeah, we need four creative mills. But let's make sure that we can craft all the rest of this stuff. So the energy source, I guess, is next. We're missing some chaos shards. That's more tier 10, tier 8 missions. Wait, nine hearts of the universe. What? All right, also elytras and balls of enchantment. The XP balls should be pretty easy. We just have to add these to a crafter and then import them into a fluid canner, which can go here. It's probably unnecessary to do this passively, but we might as well. Oh, that's actually quite slow to fill them. Well, I'm glad it's passive. <laughs> so for the elytras, it's a bit of a strange recipe here. We need elytra wings, which can come from palladium plates. We can get these easily. Although the exquisite emeralds come from the tier three mission, and I think we use all of these in a blast furnace somewhere over here. Yeah, they're all being sent through this blast furnace here. Maybe let's change this level emitter. And this should only run if we have above, I don't know, 3000 exquisite emeralds. And let's just launch a bunch of tier threes so that we can get this process started. You know what? This assembly line is taking quite a quite a while for these tier nine circuits, but there's no reason now why we can't swap this out with a max energy input hatch. I don't know if we can fill this with a CEF at UV. I mean, I guess we can because this is 16 amps. It should be able to power this thing. Okay, so we now got our palladium plates added to the wall. We should now be stocking up on exquisite emeralds. And this way we can make our elytra recipe. Oh, this is just leather. Although we don't have any automated way to make leather is the thing. Dark steel nuggets, we have those. And you know what? It's your unlucky day. Your fate is sealed like the chickens. I think you're coming with me. Yeah, I would say LUV power definitely hurts to touch. <laughs> definitely don't do that. Let's give this some drawers and that should be leather taken care of. So I think now we're just missing our kale shards, the exquisite emeralds. And I think, yeah, some more leather to build up, some more bottles of enchantment. Palladium plates. Uh, maybe we should upgrade the drawer on that thing. Carbon dust. Wait, <laughs> are we missing carbon dust? Okay, I'll, I'll set up an electrolyzer for something. Maybe methane. And then other than that, I think it's just going to be hearts of the universe at the end. Yeah, nine of these things. Well, wow. we better get some more tier eights going. Speaking of the tier eights, look at this number behind me. <laughs> look how many tier eights we have now since we have them on passive. That is crazy. We should maybe increase the buffer in the tier sevens. Although if I'm not wrong, that is automatically being sent. Yeah, so we have 122 layer of the Chaos Guardian data. That is an insane amount of tier 7s. Wow. <laughs> 
That kind of gives you an idea of how long I've been at this world. Like, just how long I've been grinding this out between episodes here. But I'm kind of worried that there's not that much left to do in terms of unique stuff. It's really all just about cleaning up the base and crafting the creatives. But that's basically where we're at in the game right now. Almost everything is done. And speaking of things being done, look at this. We got our creative mill. No quest though, because I think we're missing the Infinity Catalyst. Yeah, that's a heart of the universe. We should probably pick that up. I guess it wanted us to do the creative RF source first. But the creative mill, I guess, can go next to our other mills. We'll have to use it in the vending upgrade, but we might as well place it in world for now. Given the fact that we've now established that we need six creative RF sources, I think it's time to get serious about these fusion injectors. I've been putting this off long enough, and I yeah, I think it's time to add quite a few more of these things. These ones here don't really count since they're only... Oh, I missed a conduit here. Yeah, obviously we don't have any injectors or filters set on these things, so... Let me see what I can do about this situation. <laughs> Alright, that was a lot of filtering to be doing there. <laughs> However, we now have one more tower here doing wyvern cores. We got the original two here, which is actually missing a storage monitor, I just realised. I somehow doubt we have wyvern cores stored, since we seem to always need these things. Maybe we have to add, a, like, a fourth tower? Oh my goodness, so many wyvern cores. But yeah, this time we have them at Draconic, just for some faster charging, since you guys let me know that it does craft faster if it charges faster, just due to these things having bigger energy buffers. So yeah, the configuration right now is three towers doing wyvern cores, one doing the energy core stabilizers. On the opposite side, we have the ender energy manipulators, which I may have set the buffer on too high the first time. Uh, we don't need 5,000 of these things buffered, <laughs> which is probably where all the wyvern cores went, since I think this process takes like five of them. So yeah, I got that lowered down again. We also got the dislocators, which are also set at 5,000. And this new one tucked in the back here is for awakened cores. This is the upgrade from the wyvern core. And yeah, I think right now it's waiting on more wyvern cores. And then using the awakened cores, we're making draconic energy cores, which also takes the wyvern versions to craft, along with these compressed capacitors. So to make the wyvern versions, we do have a bunch of crafting over here. Uh, yeah, this was all the actual additions batteries. Oh my goodness, this was a lot of hassle. <laughs> But it's done, we got it done here. Yeah, all of these things were, were the main reason that we need all of this Inori. I think Inori and Restonia, yeah. Which seems to be working quite well in this new system that we've set up here. Also, you probably have already guessed by now that I have been having some audio issues with this episode. A lot of audio issues. <laughs> it's actually kind of stressing me out here, but yeah, I'm trying to get things figured out here. I've heard so many clips of myself at this point that I don't even know what sounds decent or it sounds awful anymore, <laughs> so I apologise if this sounds a little bit weird. You know, I've actually restarted this episode like twice, I think now. I just deleted the whole project file. Uh, so yeah, apologies if this is also late. This is a very cursed episode, that's for sure. But yeah, anyways, on to some more fun stuff right now. Let's get, let's try to get some more creative items. I think next we maybe go for the energy cell. I don't think this should be too difficult, honestly. We're missing nano CPUs, that's uh, something we have to actually set up, and yeah. 10,000 engraved Lapatron crystals? Oh, okay, yeah, we better get this process started. <laughs> Turns out we actually do have a bit more here to do. Alright, so all the way at the bottom of this Lapatron chain, we have to combine Ruby Dust and Redstone Dust. This has to go into the mixer, we'll have to supply exact 64 for each, just to make sure we don't block up the machine. And this is going to give us Energium Dust. But before we process this, we do have to make sure that we, we can make Ruby automatically. So to make ruby dust at this point in the game, I think we're just going to pulverize exquisite rubies. We can get exquisites from the tier 3 mission. And as far as I know, there's no other use for these things. So we can, we're safe just to turn all of these into ruby dust. Now then, with the energium dust, we have to send this into an autoclave with distilled water. I don't know if distilled water is something that we have on our tanks there. I know exactly where we can get some distilled water. I think it's in ore processing. These things? Yes, perfect. Apparently you can't bucket distilled water, but you can put it in a tank. So we'll add it to these creative tanks here. That should fill the autoclave up. And again, no other use for energium, so I think we can just turn this all into energy crystals. Which I don't want to charge in my inventory, so we have to be careful here. Okay, it did go into the drawer. Let's give this some upgrades. 
So from here we have to craft them with either lapis, lazurite or sodalite plates. And lapis, I just checked, we don't really have that much of. We have it in ore form. And we can get this infinitely through this chemical reaction recipe, through the Densors, which we can get from the Tier 4 mission. So you know what? We are just going to add an EV furnace on this. <laughs> and we're just going to smelt the ore straight into lapis crystals. I think it gives us 6 at a time. And yeah, since EV is the highest it will go, we have an EV CEF on the back to power it. Then all we need is a compressor to turn it into plates. Conveyor for insert. And we're making lapis plates, nice. This is only for the one creative craft, so it's not like we need like hundreds of thousands of lapis. I think this is- oh wait, this is not being inserted here. Oh, we didn't plug it in here. There we go, okay. So I guess now we just combine with tier 3 circuits here and we get lapis run crystals. Let's see if we can find a space on this wall here. Maybe this is the last one. Yep, I think we're on the last crafter here. We're definitely gonna have to expand this thing. Okay, is this gonna work with the charge? Yes, it does, nice. And the last step is just to set up a laser engraver. Let's see if we can put this back in. I don't want this to charge. <laughs> if I pick this up, I think it's gonna charge it. There we go. Yeah, so we need 10,000 of these things. That might take a little while to build up. Hopefully we have enough ruby and lapis. Uh, I mean, I guess we only have 1,000 exquisite ruby left. Maybe let's send a bunch more tier 3 missions. Oh, no nether quartz. No nether quartz. I guess it's all being used here for pulsating polymer clay. Although, you know what? There is these two drawers here. This is like 500,000 right here. <laughs> I'm so glad I never trashed those things. But yeah, these have been sitting here for a little... What is this? Methane? Yeah, these have been sitting here for a little while. Let's maybe just hook these up. That should uh, temporarily fix our problems here. Now we can send our tier 3 missions. Yeah, so I think we just need these energy cells, which can we can do in the alloy smelter. Probably only one at a time because these things have charge. And I don't think there's much need in doing this. all of this stuff on demand. I think we also need this capacitor bank here. Yeah, and we have to set everything manually here. I think there is also issues with these capacitor banks for MBT. Okay, can we get the basic one? Lead rods. This one we might as well pass. If we got a spare lathe space here. Yeah, now we can craft the basic. And from here, I think it's just uh, simple crafting recipes with the conversion kits. Although I think we'll have to set all of these manually. <laughs> so there is also large batteries, which have to be made in a cannon machine. At least the filled versions. And this is a 80 second recipe. I mean, I guess it is at ULV. Yeah, I just realized this is at ULV, so there's absolutely no need to do this at ZPM. <laughs> Why not? We already have it crafted. Apparently, we also don't have antimony, so let's correct this. There's also something in this craft which is using a mainframe. That should definitely not be the case. And I have a feeling it's one of these extended craft recipes here. Since normally AE is smart enough to distinguish that you want the highest tier circuit. I don't think that applies for extended crafting, though. Is it this zero point? Yeah, here it is, right here. We don't want these first tier 7s in here, we want the wet wear processors. And I think that just leaves our Lapitron crystals and the nano CPUs. Nano CPUs are something we set up uh, like quite early in the game, but we didn't set it up again after we took it down from our old base. It looks like we do need it here though, so uh, yeah, let me go and set that up really quickly. Alright, so a couple more machines gives us the nano CPU wafers. To be fair, I think we only were short like two of these things. So probably not necessary to do it passively, but we need a few of these energy cells. And one other thing is I've added a level emitter onto this precision laser engraver, just to make sure that we can stock some of these Lapitron crystals, since these are also used in the, the craft for the energy cell. So yeah, I think for this one we are just missing our Lapitron crystals and the Lapitron ships. I'm not entirely sure exactly what the bottleneck here is going to be. It looks like it's not Lapis, which is good. Although I think this drawer needs upgraded, because it's never going to reach 64 if we don't upgrade, and therefore that laser engraver won't run. So I'm not sure if we can get this creative item specifically because of the lapis this episode. However, when I was making all of those draconic upgrades up there, I did actually request a second RF source. Yeah, you may have noticed this recipe package earlier on. I think all we have to do is assemble this thing. Is it going to craft? Aha, we got our second creative RF source. <laughs> we are still quite a long way off of this thing, but I mean, some of these are all the same item, like the infinity ingots around the edge. Yeah, each one of these does cost a heart of the universe, but I mean, other than that, it's not... Not actually too bad, apart from the maybe the dragon hearts. That may end up catching us off. I guess we can also fill in the tanks here at the bottom. And that's just about all we can lay out right now. <laughs> but you know what? Some things are starting to come together here. I'm really glad I got some of the cleanup under here done again this episode. Maybe we'll remove this thing as well. I don't know if we need that farming station anymore, to be honest. But yeah, we're going to wrap things up here. Let me know about the audio issues. I'm going to try to keep tweaking with this a bit. And try to get it sorted out for next episode for sure. It's still not the way I want it to be. And again, apologies if this was a bit of a weird episode. <laughs> yeah. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you all soon for some more Nomi Factory.